Now I think the answer is no. Being an electrician is not worth it when you compare the profession to other professions and opportunities offered within the controls, automation and BMS industry that electricians could be taking advantage of. Now I know a lot of electricians personally that absolutely love their work and I'm very happy for them. At the end of the day that's what we should be optimising for is happiness but I also know a lot of electricians that feel stuck or frustrated with where they're at and where the industry has gone over the last several years and will be a lot happier taking advantage of all the incredible opportunities within the controls, automation and BMS industry. Things like ongoing career progression, better money, variety in terms of the work, nicer working environments and always something new to learn and get better at. Now I spent the last six to seven years working in the controls, automation and BMS industry and today I want to share why I think controls, automation and BMS should be your next step as an electrician if you're not entirely happy with your career at the moment. So look, before we get into all of this, like I have nothing against electrician. Like I've, I'm basically an electrician slash engineer. Like I've got my 18th edition. I've done 2391. But it's the profession out of all the trades that most interested me. But I just see how things are going and I speak to a lot of electricians and I, I see their frustrations. And I just want to share my perspective and what I know and what I see. That, you know, if people aren't happy, if electricians aren't happy with what they're doing, there is other opportunities and I think personally they're better opportunities and I want to basically run through those with you and yeah give you my perspective my my argument for why I think you guys as electricians are very well suited to upskill and get into controls automation and BMS. Okay, so the downsides that I see being an electrician. So firstly, I just wanna talk about just general work-life balance. And the first one is, is long hours, like multiple jobs per day on different sites, you know, getting up early, getting home late, lots of different bitty jobs a lot of the time. Some of them that overrun, a lot that you can't foresee problems happening and it, it just all adds up and you've got to obviously get the job done you don't want to if you start a job you've got to finish the job and it just all mounts up and then you're doing quoting in the evenings or weekends an electrician that i spoke to the other day fairly new into business just gone self-employed over the last six months he's doing like 70 hour weeks which is just not good <laughs> and he he was telling me about just how he just burnt out and it, it affects you mentally as well because your mind is basically having to shut your body down for you like the other thing is it's a physically demanding job. It's physically demanding work. You know, doing things like installation work, doing things like fault finding in attics, in lofts, in cramped corners, in machines as well, in corners of machines, you know, just getting yourself into awkward positions. It's physically demanding on, on your body. Also working in harsh conditions a lot of the time. So working outside in the cold, in the rain, in the mud, and then also dirty industrial environments as well. And then the other big thing for me is there it's an unpredictable schedule like there's not much routine when you're doing stuff out on site and jumping from job to job and you know then having to do quoting on weekends and evenings so you end up getting no there's no routine which then when you have no routine that then affects your physical health because you're not able to get into a routine of going to the gym or doing sports and then because you're on the road all the time you end up eating mcdonald's or unhealthy fast food because it's just easier and you don't have the time if you're doing 70 hour weeks you don't have the time or energy to plan or prep healthy food at home to then take out of you. So that takes a hit because you don't have that control or that structure, that routine, that also then takes a toll on your mental health. And it just gets to a point, and I'm saying this from experience, where you just feel like you have no control over your life. And then this is what gets you to a point where you have a mental breakdown and you just burn out. The second thing I want to talk about is really the limited career growth and earning opportunities or potential as an electrician. So think about it firstly from an employed electrician's perspective. Like the the general progression really is you do installation work, service work, maintenance work, maybe some testing work, but then really the progression from there is becoming a manager or a QS, you know, qualified supervisor. And you'll you'll notice that salaries aren't really increasing, and especially with more people coming into the industry, like less qualified people that are doing these 16-week courses or DIYers that are learning all this stuff on YouTube, not to the right level, but you know, they're getting by 
fly and they they don't know all the regulations and stuff but you know they can they can wire a light switch and light not to the right level though so the market is becoming saturated which is increasing competition for for electricians in general with all these new electricians coming in which is driving down the, the amount that you can charge for your labor and ultimately it means that just general electrical contractors can't charge what they used to so it's almost like it's necessary now for those better electricians that have been in the game for a while to start specializing and going into other routes maybe like renewables but again that's getting saturated but this is my argument upskilling and getting involved with controls automation bms and then if you look at it from a self-employed or business owner's perspective because that's like the next logical progression really if you've done everything as an employed electrician that's the next thing self-employed business owner but as the things i've just previously mentioned like starting a business certainly in the domestic commercial market you know being the way it is being the fact that there's all these new people coming into the industry after spending 16 weeks on a course all the diys learning stuff off youtube that's a race to the bottom it seems so doing just general electrical installation work it's getting very difficult to actually make any money and make any profit because there's just too much competition and it's ultimately a race to the bottom once that happens also it's just sticking with like the certainly domestic market with inflation with rising costs of living this is making it harder for you know just standard regular customers to justify costs especially if you are charging more premium rates to justify that cost when they're, they're not really it's not an investment it's just a cost you know they're just getting some lights changed or having a an additional circuit added to their kitchen dining extension there's no what i'm getting at is there's no real return on investment if you were say comparing that to you know renewables or energy management or the bms sector where you are really managing energy and making things more efficient when you're actually saving people money it's a lot easier to sell because they're getting a tangible return on their initial investment now the next thing i want to talk about is technological and geopolitical advancements so it's probably pretty obvious to most people these days that technology doesn't wait for anyone and it never goes backwards so really it needs to be accepted it needs to be embraced because think about it we're never we're never going to go back to candlelight are we and just look at the development of cars over the years you know how we used to have wind up windows now we've got electric windows now we've got parking sensors heated seats you know, reversing sensors or well, look at teslas for example look at the technology and the way teslas are going driving themselves so it's just inevitable like these two technologies here like lighting like cars and it's the same with homes buildings like they're getting more intelligent and technology is able to optimize comfort and optimize saving of energy and when we get into the industrial process control able to automate processes reducing you know labor costs and just making things more efficient so technology is going to continue and unless it's embraced and accepted there's good potential i feel that electricians are going to get left behind and certainly with emerging trends you know smart home market is becoming more prevalent as mentioned renewable energies and i think these are specializations and skills that electricians should really be considering and thinking about the other thing is this net zero by 2050 and there's just huge opportunities like i read a, a magazine energy in intelligent buildings or something like that and i read a little section or well, there's a scheme the uk government has a scheme of one and a half billion which is basically provided to public sector buildings like libraries schools councils specifically focused on supporting these public sector buildings reduce their carbon footprint and reduce their energy costs basically and making things more intelligent so just huge opportunity i think you know for electricians if they upskill and considering these sectors these buildings like there's one and a half billion being given by the government to these buildings so it's money that needs to be spent specifically on reducing energy costs and making things more carbon neutral you know to meet that target of net zero so there's there's all these geopolitical things happening at the moment and this isn't just in the uk but incentives by governments to enable businesses and organizations to hit this net zero figure now also let's talk about physical risks that come with being an electrician and we touched on it earlier like once you get into your 40s and you're you're still climbing ladders you're working in confined spaces in lofts and attics and crouched in 
tight corners of machines, lifting heavy equipment like loading, unloading the van, doing exhausting installation work, but there's only so much the body can take doing that on a consistent ongoing basis day in day out. And I was, I kind of became aware of this early into my 30s and thought this isn't something that I'm going to be able to continue to do sustainably, you know, into my 40s, into my 50s, into my 60s. So I wanted to make sure that I had a skill set that if I chose to, I could fall back on. On where I wouldn't necessarily have to be earning my money, my salary through doing practical hands-on work, that I could also earn money through using my, my head and the knowledge and the skill sets that I've got in here that I could you know use doing design work or programming work or consultation, that kind of thing. Not that there's anything wrong with you know using your hands to uh, money, like this type of stuff, building panels, I absolutely love it. But even building panels, it's a lot less strenuous on, on your body physically, you know? So it's just keeping these these things in mind. Also, think about it. Like when you're dealing with you know low voltage, two thirty volt plus, you know single phase, three phase. There's risks involved with that. You know shocks burns also falls if we're working at heights you know we can we can fall off things fall off ladders so these are like just risks that come with the job which are other things to factor in you know you're doing dangerous work are you getting compensated for this dangerous work that you're doing and it's made even worse by all these DIYers and YouTubers and you you go in after someone like that has done some work an incompetent person they make things more hazardous and even more risky to you more chance of getting shot more chance of you know, getting burnt, more chance of fires being caused because of their incompetence that could potentially affect you, or you could potentially get the blame for some some of the work that they've done. Like if it's stuff that you're unaware of, but you've been in after them, and then you've signed it off. You know, there's just these these risks that that come into it. And look, if any of this is making sense to you, I recommend visiting beautomation.co.uk forward slash training, where we specifically work with electricians and engineers and help them break into the control automation and BMS industry. We are a results driven business whereby we don't just give you a load of training material and say there you go get on with it. We actively take part in helping our guys actually get the outcome that they want like we are collaborative we work with them you know throughout their journey getting them to where they want to go. So if this is something that resonates with you check us out the the link will be in the description if you want to go straight there. Now my argument as to why I feel electricians should train transition into controls, automation, and BMS? Well, the first thing is that there's a huge overlap in terms of the skill set that makes the transition much, much easier. Because if you think about it, electricians already have strong foundational knowledge in electrical power and lighting, understand cable infrastructure, understand all the safety and regulations and things to be aware of there. The problem solving abilities developed from fault finding in just general electrical is very, very simple similar to problem solving and fault finding methodology that you use in controls. You know, it's the same logical step-by-step -step breakdown approach. And then you've got huge amounts of practical hands-on experience with electrical systems and components that are very familiar. You know, you're probably familiar with a lot of the things in this panel already. So these are all directly transferable skills that transfer into roles like controls engineers, system integrators, BMS service engineers, etc. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is higher earning potential. So salaries for engineers in controls, automation, and BMS, they are significantly higher than those of electricians. So just to give you a couple of UK examples and US examples. So an electrician in the UK, between 30 and 50K per year, and in the States, 40K dollars to 70K dollars. Now controls engineers in the UK, averaging around 40 to 80K, and then in, in the States, $60,000 to $120,000 per year. And those are for employed roles. Now for self-employed controls engineers, BMS engineers, contractors, and business owners, you look at, you're starting at around the 500 quid per day mark and you know, easily earning over 100k per year. Now, just for context, I charge nothing lower than 500 quid per day. But I haven't ever charged anything more than 650 a day, but that that's the sort of range for me. This is excluding VAT, by the way. So adding 20% on those day rates for end customers. And what's crazy, where there's huge demand, like cities like London, Manchester, I'm sure it's the same in the States, and there's not enough supply in terms of BMS engineers specifically here, in 
London, I've heard that self-employed contract engineers are able to charge between 800 and a thousand pounds a day to do BMS work, which is crazy. Now, the next thing to be aware of is it's an expanding job market globally. So controls, automation, BMS industries are growing rapidly and partly down to net zero by 2050, like we discussed earlier in some of those points. I heard this the other day as well. I haven't got any data or proof to back it up. So this is just anecdotal, but the average age of a BMS engineer is in their mid fifties. So again, think about supply and demand. The, the supply of engineers is starting to dwindle or it, you know, it's low anyway, but it's dwindling even further as, as these senior engineers, you know, move into retirement. Again, it's just boosting up the demand of engineers. So, you know, if there's no new people coming in, which there isn't, which there should be, again, it's just supply and demand economics 101. The less supply, the more demand, the more you can charge. And then if you think about it in terms of the industrial sector, you know, increased demand for automation in manufacturing, logistics. So just, well, any type of manufacturing facility. Think about like warehousing logistics, like Amazon, Ocado, these kind of warehousing businesses. As mentioned with Net Zero, like a push for energy efficiency in buildings, you know, homes, commercial buildings, emerging technologies like IoT, robotics and renewables. And this is a global thing. You know, this isn't just in the UK, the US, this is a global thing. You know, so controls engineers, BMS engineers are going to be sought after worldwide, you know, offering opportunities to work anywhere, you know, going abroad, working rem remotely. So this huge amount of demand globally just means job security, even in economic downturns. Because if you're an engineer that can save organizations money in terms of their energy spend or making things more efficient in terms of manufacturing and processing, you're saving businesses, people money. So there's always going to be demand for people with that skill set that can do that. So the next thing is more interesting and challenging work. So controls and BMS roles involve problem solving at system level, you know, not just at the end, you know, the end of the system, you know, where stuff out in the field is, you know, it comes all the way back to the control system like this, but also the, the programming within the controllers as well. And there's so much to learn, like, and there's so many little sub sectors within sectors and niches within niches and skill sets within skill sets. Like if you think about it, HVAC, so that's heating, ventilation, air conditioning. So you can go deep into any of those subjects, refrigeration as well, electrical controls. That's a skill set and a profession in itself. Getting into design work, documentation work, specifying, programming, as I just mentioned, programming these controllers, networking, so like IP networks, other protocols like Modbus, BACnet, and then things like just panel building and panel testing. And that's just to name a few. There's just so many little professions and skill sets that come into controls, automation, and BMS. So what's great about this is there's just so many roles that you can get involved with and so many opportunities in terms of career. Like if you get bored of installation work, you can then move into the workshop and do panel building. And then you might do panel testing and then you might move up to do programming and then you might develop to do design. Like there's just so much movement, just having a good understanding of controls. And just a few examples of projects. So one project might be, I don't know, a three bed smart home automation project that's being refurbished. Another type of project might be a BMS energy management system that's going into a school. Third project might be convey about system in a warehouse or, or in a logistics utility and improved work-life balance. Now we've already talked about some of these things, but just to hit the point home, less physically demanding than traditional electrical work, opportunities for hybrid roles, some based in the office when you're doing maybe design, programming, workshop testing, panel building, and then part of the stuff can be out in the field. So if you are doing service work, if you are doing commissioning, if you are doing handover to a client, as mentioned, there's just so much opportunity to learn and innovate and go down different pathways and different professions within controls and automation is far more fulfilling as well when you have all these options. Like say you're you're a controls engineer, like you can do everything from specifying design, documentation, to the panel building, the panel testing, the programming, to the on-site commissioning, and then the support, the tech support afterwards. So there's just so much variety, which is so much more fulfilling. You know, they say variety is the spice of life. I think that's how the saying goes anyway. And also big thing is your work is more tangible because you're saving business 
businesses money in terms of managing their energy or you're making production more efficient and so you can actually see a tangible result a tangible outcome from that from the work that you do you're happy clients because you're saving them money ultimately at the end of the day you're making things better for them they're able to increase their production and output so just that is really really fulfilling for me anyway that was the video hope you enjoy see you on the next one